Welcome to Hollywood Graveyard, where we set out to remember and celebrate the lives of those who lived to entertain us by visiting their final resting places. Some lived to make us laugh, others to cry or fall in love, while others still lived to scare us to death. <laughs> In the quiet corridors of the Great Mausoleum in Glendale, we find Hollywood's first gothic star, Theta Berra. She was the original vamp, dark, exotic, and sinfully alluring. She was one of the most popular actresses of the silent era, seen in films like Cleopatra and The She-Devil. Tragically, most of her films are lost. The man who essentially invented Hollywood's horror genre rests in the mausoleum at Home of Peace Cemetery. Carl Lemley was the founder of Universal Pictures. Under his tenure in the 20s and 30s, while other studios were making comedies and musicals, Universal decided to tackle the world of monsters and introduced audiences to classic creatures such as Dracula, Frankenstein, the mummy, the wolfman, the creature from the Black Lagoon, and more. The earliest Universal horror films, The Hunchback of Notre Dame in 1923 and The Phantom of the Opera in 1925, were both silent films and starred legendary character actor Lon Chaney, who rests deep in the dark halls of the Great Mausoleum, in an unmarked crypt. Chaney was known as the man of a thousand faces for his ability to morph into his characters through makeup that he applied himself. Many consider him the godfather of all monster actors. Lon Chaney Jr. followed in his footsteps, playing the Wolfman in the 1940s. When Chaney Jr. died, his body was donated to medical research. The leading lady of several of these universal monster movies was Mary Philbin, who is entombed in a crypt in the mausoleum at Calvary Cemetery. She starred alongside Conrad Veidt in The Man Who Laughs in 1928, but will forever be remembered as Christine in 1925's Phantom of the Opera, opposite Lon Chaney. Her unmasking scene of the Phantom was reportedly so shocking, it caused many in the audience to scream and faint. One of Universal's most iconic monsters was Dracula, which starred Hungarian actor Bela Lugosi, buried in his Dracula cape here at Holy Cross Cemetery. Lugosi's portrayal of the Transylvanian Count, as both dangerous and alluring at once, is considered by many as the definitive Dracula. I am Dracula. He also starred in the 1932 film White Zombie, considered the first zombie feature film. I 
Adeline, what's wrong? Adeline, my dear, please. Oh. No. Adeline. Adeline. garden out back of the Guilford Crematorium in Surrey, England, is the humble marker to one of Hollywood's most iconic horror actors, Boris Karloff. He was brought to life as Frankenstein's monster in several Universal films of the 30s. The monster was originally credited simply with a question mark. When this dead hand moves, the monster created by a man they called Mad is turned loose to strike terror into the hearts of men. <laughs> Karloff also played the mummy, Imhotep. Back in L.A., at the Chapel of the Pines Crematory, we find a cenotaph to the man who brought the monster to life. Colin Clive played Dr. Frankenstein in the Universal films of the 1930s. One of the pallbearers at Clive's funeral was Peter Lorre, himself a legendary horror actor, resting here in the Cathedral Mausoleum at Hollywood Forever. He was known for playing the villainous and sinister foreigner. He starred alongside another horror icon, Vincent Price, in several adaptations of the works of Poe, including The Raven and The Black Cat. Before Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, there was Vampyra, the original queen of horror camp and television's first horror host. She rests here at Hollywood Forever Cemetery. She had her own television show in the 50s, The Vampyra Show, and can also be seen in Ed Wood's Plan 9 from Outer Space. Sounds like Kay's in trouble. Sometimes we love a little campiness in our horror films. Take the 1958 film The Blob. It starred Annette Corso, buried here at Valhalla Memorial Park, and also featured Steve McQueen in his first lead role. Now, wait a minute, Steve. Tell us what happened. Well, I'm trying to tell you. Now, this thing had killed the doc. Well, what was it? Stop with it, kid. Well, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a mass that keeps getting bigger and bigger. It... Every one of you watching this screen, look out. 
Because soon, very soon, the most horrifying monster menace ever conceived will be oozing into this theater. Horror isn't always meant to just make us scream. Sometimes it can make us laugh. Hollywood's original spooky family, the Addams Family, debuted on television in 1964. The matriarch of this family is Morticia Adams, first played by Carolyn Jones, who rests here at Melrose Abbey in Anaheim. Did I just hear a peal of thunder? I did, Tish, you did. Oh, that's the most heavenly sound. <laughs> it makes life worth living. <laughs> You remember our honeymoon, Gourmet? Who could forget our first night in Death Valley? There was a stillness in the air. Tish. The moon was full, and that lovely, soft fluttering of bat wings. <laughs> and that divine cave. At Holy Cross Cemetery in Culver City, we find the grave of another Adam's character the beloved Uncle Fester, first played by Jackie Coogan in the 60s TV series. Uncle Fester, looks, charm, and personality aren't everything. <laughs> There's such a thing as learning an accomplishment. Accomplishment? Who else do you know that's 110 volts? <laughs> Watch. <laughs> I can even make it blink. <laughs> The first child of Gomez and Morticia Adams is a roly-poly boy named Pugsley. He was played by Ken Weatherwax. Ken died in 2014, but a public memorial for him was held on Halloween Day, 2017, and his cremated remains were entombed in a niche here at Valhalla Memorial Park. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore, while I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came tapping. Pugsley, darling, you're not listening. The raven was always one of your favorites. You said it made you feel so nice and cozy. I like it all right. I've just got other things on my mind. The eldest member of the Adams family is Grandma Adams, a witch and the mother of Gomez. She was first played on screen by Blossom Rock, buried here at Forest Lawn, Glendale. <laughs> you only got 10 points. I nipped him in the ear, didn't I? Ear? Watch the master. <laughs> You're standing right in my way. It's the only safe place. Step aside. Now watch this one. Right in the old gizzard. That was close. Go ahead, Fester, you get another shot. The undisputed master of suspense in the mid-20th century was Alfred Hitchcock. And some would say Psycho is his greatest work. At Westwood Memorial Park, we find the final resting place of Janet Lee who played the unfortunate Marion Crane, who ran afoul of Norman Bates and his mother at the Bates Motel. Just a few feet from Janet is the grave of Ray Bradbury, known mostly as the author of Fahrenheit 451 and several sci-fi works. He also penned a beloved Halloween story, The Halloween Tree, which traces the history of Samhain and Halloween. Another of the legendary horror films from the 60s is Rosemary's Baby. Also here at Westwood is the grave of John Cassavetes, who played Guy Woodhouse. 
This was published in 1933. There were covens in Europe. That's what they're called, the, um, the, the congregation. Covens in Europe, in America, and in Australia, and they have one right here. That whole bunch, the parties with the singing and the flute and the chanting, those are espas or sabbaths or I mean, whatever they're excited, called. I don't get excited, huh? Read what they do, Guy. They use blood in their rituals, and the blood that has the most power is baby's blood. And they don't just use the blood, they use the flesh, too. Rosemary, for God's sakes! One of the greatest horror parodies is Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein. And there was no more perfect man to play Dr. Frankenstein's assistant, Igor, than British funny man Marty Feldman, buried here at Forest Lawn, Hollywood. And nobody cares for I me. Mean, Igor! With the recent success of the film It, there's no doubt that Stephen King is one of the all time great horror writers. In 1980, Stanley Kubrick directed an adaptation of his novel, The Shining, a film considered a horror masterpiece. It featured actor Scatman Crothers who also rests at Forest Lawn Hollywood. You know, Doc, when something happens, it can leave a trace of itself behind. Say, like, if someone burns toast. Well, maybe things that happen leave other kind of traces behind. Not things that anyone can notice, but things that people who shine can see. Another legendary horror film from the 80s not only terrified audiences, but brought along with it rumors of a curse, after two of its young starlets met tragically early deaths. Heather O'Rourke played Carol Ann in the Poltergeist films. She died at the age of 12, and is entombed here at Westwood Memorial Park. Buried nearby is Heather's Poltergeist co-star, Dominique Dunn, who played Dana in the first film. She died at just 22, murdered by an ex-boyfriend. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Dana, get the car! 